Putting science on display is, is important to us at Parkin. We want to make sure that the laboratories that we do look cool to everybody, not just the people working in them. I'm Dave Driscoll. I'm a principal at Park and Architects and I'm responsible for the science and technology sector. When it comes to the design of a laboratory or a laboratory building or a science building, you have to start from the basics. It's going to be a laboratory building, so you create a module that works for laboratory furniture, for traditional laboratory furniture, because it's likely there will be wet labs in the building. You come up with a module that you know works, and then you base the structural module on the science module to lay out the laboratory. And if you do that, then you know the building's going to work, and you know that it's going to be flexible at the end. Then you take and you put the uh, infrastructure, so the mechanical electrical services, on a grid that suits that structural grid, horizontally and vertically, places where if you want to move that bench from where it is to somewhere else, there's another place to plug in and it's there. We started looking at laboratories in a new way. Rather than an individual researcher having his own laboratory, they wanted things to be more flexible. They wanted scientists to see each other. We had to look at things to influence that sort of science, a more interactive, communicative type of laboratory. The other important part of getting scientists to talk together was creating collaboration spaces. The way laboratories are designed, uh, you have a place to do your dry work and a place to do your wet work. Laboratories are very expensive to operate because they're designed or they traditionally have been designed for the worst case scenario. So if there was a spill in the laboratory, you'd need the air to evacuate quickly. So you, you'll have eight to 12 air changes in that space. What we've been doing, what lab designers have been doing recently is you keep your office space on one side, you keep your laboratory space on another side, either across a hall from each other or in a separate building, but somehow interconnected. The clever way to do that is to create a collision space in that link. It's just creating opportunities for science scientists to talk to each other to advance the science. And as architects, we have to create that environment. So we create open, transparent walls, a lot of glass, and we create these forced collision spaces. Laboratories use a lot of energy. Most of it's due to heating and cooling. There are ways to make laboratories a little more energy efficient. One of the ways is with more controls on the, on the system so that when all the fume hoods are open and they're sucking a lot of air through, the fans are ramped up as high as they go. When the fume hood is closed, then the sensors sense how much air is being exhausted out of the room and they ramp down the amount of air coming into the space so that you use the minimum amount of air that you need. To design a lab building, you really have to start with the understanding that it's a laboratory building. It's gonna have services that have to be accessible throughout the life of the building. You have to be able to add in 20 years and 30 years, you have to be able to add new service that you've never even thought of. Like they may be running argon from a, from a pipe system. That doesn't happen now, it all comes in bottles. But you have to be able to get into the spaces and there has to be room to run that new service at any point in the future. So a good lab building is capable of changing and evolving to suit the changes to the science, to the changes to the equipment and the furniture over the life of that building. Uh, one of the things they, that we've discovered in, in healthcare design is that biophilic design, which is designing around nature, we've used it in, in designing laboratory buildings and found that it had great effect. Like people love it. They, they just, they love to be in a building that has green space, it's generating oxygen, it's absorbing carbon dioxide, so the, the air is just better, it just feels better in a building that has plants in it. So creating gardens inside laboratory buildings is actually really beneficial to the wellness of the scientists and the other techs that are working in the building. 